All right, hey friends, Hi, right here. Um, just got a new camera. I hope you enjoy the beautiful video quality. Right now I'm only recording in 1080 because um, most of you probably know that YouTube is charging for 4K now. Um, so I'm just doing, got a new camera. It's a Google Pixel 6 Pro. Um, I also have my, uh, what is it, Xiaomi Poco X3 NFC. I got that fixed. Um, I was using that for my other camera, so. Soon I'll have some, some multi-cam kind of set up for you guys, but um, hopefully that'll help out with the video quality. Alright, but before we get started, I just want to give a quick shout out um, to the two winners of the Anol VX contest. Um, so, the gentleman, uh, his screen name is Irtez. Congratulations, man, you got the Anol VX. And for the second contestant, Mr. Alex T. Alex T, you won the DIY IM. I wanted to thank everybody for entering the contest. I do appreciate it. We got over 700 submissions. So let's get into a review. Um, I'm overdue, so let's do this real quick. We got the KZ ZVX. These were sent to me by KZ. Um, I did not pay for them with my own money, but like I usually say, this will not affect my review in any way. If it's crap, I'll say it's crap. If it's good, I'll say it's good. Their, their packaging is very basic. White box got specifications on the back here uh, I don't really pay attention to most of this except for the impedance and the sensitivity you'll notice these are actually pretty high so they're 25 ohms and they're also 109 DB plus minus so the sensitivity is actually pretty high considering these have a Zobel network so we have the earphones themselves pretty nice looking um, now these have been through quite a bit uh, I have already torn into them. I've already replaced the drivers and experimented with the Zobel network and, and whatnot. They do come with foam tips. Now these are not the ones that came with them. These are just as an illustration. Um, they do have uh, foam tips that you get with the IEMs themselves. Uh, probably because they have a little peak in the treble and I think maybe KZ was trying to, to tune that down a little bit. But um, we'll get into that here shortly. Real quick, before before I get into the, um, the IMs, I just wanted to read here on the front of the box. So it lists, it says, a new generation nanoscale diaphragm dynamic IM, low distortion, uh, high reduction. I'm not sure what that means. Excellent analytical ability. So we'll, we'll talk about that here in just a second. But yeah, this is a new diaphragm. As far as the packaging goes, so this is what you get. You get the box, you get the IMs, you get the foam tips. Let's uh, take apart the cable real quick. All right, so this is everything you get in the box. You get the IEMs, you get the uh, cable. It's just a generic cable, and then you get three sets of foam tips. The smallest ones are the ones that are included on the IEMs themselves, and then the two other ones are the medium and large. These are very comfortable. Um, they, they're kind of a typical KZ shape. They're not 100% exact to their, their plastic IEMs, but they're close. They have a relatively short spout um, and it's relatively narrow. So if we look on the micrometer here, they're 4.5 millimeters in the, the more um, narrow part. And if we go up to the larger portion, about 5.2. So about 4.5 millimeters on the nozzle themselves. Um, and then the length, yeah, it's, it's not very long. And you'll notice also they have um, skewed connectors now. So this is uh, a feature for wearability. It makes them just a little bit easier to wear, which is a very nice addition. We'll get into the, we'll get in more into the weeds with this angled connector because it's my personal belief that these should have been oriented the other way from the factory. Now, I have, I've actually modified these myself. I, I want to say thank you so much to KZ for actually putting effort into their IMs. They're they're actually trying to make a difference um, and they're really trying hard uh, but they've moved on to to more of a uh, a balanced sound signature. Uh, their target's a little bit different than like a moon drop. It's not it's still not like a DF neutral or anything like that. It follows more closely to a Harman except instead of the bass tuck it kind of just keeps going and it's got like a sub bass elevation and we'll get into that in a minute but anyway i just wanted to to tell kz directly if you guys are watching this that we are very appreciative that you're putting in the time and effort and attention to putting these these angled connectors on here when they were in their 
standard orientation, what would happen is the, the bottom of the nozzle would want to come out of my ear and they would want to angle like this. So I flipped the rotation of the connector so that way it, when they're in the ears, um, the angle of the connector helps to push the nozzle in the ear. So just keep that in mind, Casey, that the pivot point, so if this is the center right here, you know, you hold it straight and you have a center line or like an imaginary line here. The angle of this connector is going to want to push the bottom of the IM into the ear. Now, when it's the opposite direction that you had it, so so here's the straight line, okay? And the, the position that they were in before, it's going to want to make the IMs come out of the ears. So I would just recommend pay attention to this line here and flip the connectors so that way when they are straight it's going to push the nozzle towards the head okay just just keep that in mind okay um, but yeah you guys are doing a great job and I just wanted to say that I am very thankful for that as far as build quality goes they're built like a tank these are some very nice shells they're very well produced now they're a little beat up they're a little scuffed up that's my doing that's they didn't come like this they are actually much nicer um, I will say, strangely enough, they have like white paint underneath. That could be some sort of like enamel coating or prim primer, whatever you want to call it. But um, this is not like white paint that's on there. This is actually the back, the black paint kind of scraping away like a Moondrop IM. The finish is going to come off. That The finish will come off. It's not the most durable finish. You know, they, they were beaten on, but they weren't like abused or anything. They were just kind of kind of knocking around in my bag and that's <clears throat> that's what happened so just keep that in mind that the paint will rub off these little things right here these are just tuning filters these are not on them stock I put these on myself and same thing with the black filters but as far as the overall fit, fit and finish before I move on to my next topic um, the fit is very very good I like the fit um, I don't necessarily recommend foam tips with them I think silicones are perfectly adequate um, I've actually been using the uh, TRN T-tips. These are some very nice tips. TRN, it's not very often that, that I find something I like from them, but these ear tips are some of my favorite um, ear tips that are produced by any manufacturer. But, um, but yeah, those work very well. And then also, if you guys know how to do them, you can make yourself some reversed star lines. These are, are very nice uh, tips that you can use. These are actually really nice, and they give you a nice wide sound field, so they sound really good. They open up the sound field and, um, and the stage, and they make it. So these are the CCA CXS. Um, these are their shells. So this is the the older brother to the um, to the ZVX. So these are the these are the OG with the the holes in the shells. They're a little bit more of a kind of a rounded design, um, but these are very very nice shells. The the finish is super strong, super nice. They don't scratch. I don't know if it's just a polished polished type of metal, um, but these are some very nice shells and they're built very very well. Uh, you can see right now I have some planar drivers. These are 10 millimeter planars. And then I have some balanced armatures that I put inside because that's a little secret of these shells. Um, these shells also fit a balanced armature. So in the future, if KZ wanted to do a hybrid, they could very easily do a nice hybrid with these. But they're already doing, in my opinion, a good enough job with the shells alone. But um, but yeah, so you can kind of see the, um, the lineage with the shells. You can see here, actually I'll, I'll use one of the face plates as a demonstration. So this is the OG, this is the CXS, and then this is the ZVX. So this is the lineage right here. And then as far as the driver goes, this is the um, this is the OG driver, CXS. So this is what it looks like. But yeah, so they got this this little open design. Um, this doesn't really influence the the sound or the feeling in any way. If anything, it maybe helps cool down the IM. And there's one one little problem with metal IMs that I've been having lately, and um, it's kind of been a big problem for me. I don't know about you guys. Um, I have some other IMs here, so these are the CVJ May. It's kind of hard to explain, but with metal IMs, so you have the outside ambient air temperature, and then you have the the air temperature inside your ear canal. The air is much warmer um, in the ear canal than it is on the outside, and these act like a 
heat radiator. So anytime you get metal IMs, what happens is the air inside the ear canal is warm. And so if you introduce cool air to, to the outside of the IM, the heat is conducted from your ear canal out to the IM and it, it's radiated. So what happens is as the heat is being conducted away from the IM, it condenses on the dampener here and so you get mo issues with moisture buildup and um, it's a it's a common occurrence with metal IMs and certain people's um, biochemistry or their ears or whatnot uh, it doesn't happen to everyone um, first off it depends on on the area you live in the the relative humidity the altitude uh, the temperature there's a lot of different variables that that have to be taken into account but for me personally, any type of metal I am, I have issues with moisture buildup. So uh, just keep that in mind that that is an issue for some people. And it's not the design. It's not it has nothing to do with KZ. It just has to do with the fact that because they are metal, there's a temperature differential and they conduct heat than say like a plastic shell where a plastic shell has uh, a little bit of insulation. It's kind of more of an insulating material than a conducting material. Metal is much more of a conducting material. So depending on the, the metallurgy, um, sometimes they can conduct heat away very rapidly and you get like crazy issues. But if you make the nozzle just a little bit bigger, say instead of like 4.5 millimeter, make it 5.5 or even 6 millimeter, there will be much less issues with, with moisture buildup. All right, so how do they sound? Um, these are probably some of the best sounding KZ earphones I've ever heard, um, to be honest. For their single DDs, these are um, so close to being like amazing. I mean, they're so close. They have a couple issues, so we'll talk about the issues here, but I just wanted to say that these are, I mean, KZ is getting so close, man. They're, they're almost nailing it. Um, they're, I'm not quite set on their Zobel network tuning that they're using. I think that they could probably do a better job just with acoustic materials instead of doing it electrically. I'm, I'm not convinced that doing it electrically is the way, especially because you're changing the impedance curve of the drivers. I'm not the engineer here. I, I know a little bit about engineering, but I'm not, I'm not the engineer. So, uh, but anyway, <clears throat> it's my personal belief that you could probably do a little bit of a better job with um, with an acoustic uh, tuning principle instead of doing the, the Zobel network. So as far as the tonality goes, um, i got to give these an A grade. Um, I think the tonality is as close to perfect as you're going to get with a $20 IM. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Two, three years ago, you, you wouldn't have been able to find a sound like this at this price point. I mean, these are just like a no-brainer for, for most people. Um, if you're relatively intense in the hobby, there are other options in the $20 price range that um, are decent. Like, I don't think 90% of them come close to, to the tonality of the, um, of the ZVX. So tonality, I give it an A. Technicalities, I give it a, a like a B minus. They're not the greatest. There's not much technical ability in them, but the tuning is is there. The tuning is very very good. So as far as the tuning goes, I would say that they're a, a balanced signature with like a slight sub bass emphasis. Uh, they're kind of close to like a harmonish tuning. They they have a little bit of roll off in the treble. There's not much extension. Uh, they cut off at about. 12 kilohertz, I would say, give or take. Um, and they don't really travel much past 12, 12 kilohertz. Uh, one of them does have a secondary peak at like 18, and the other doesn't. Um, but I can't hear the difference. My ears are not, not capable of hearing that high, apparently. But um, but yeah, so there is small difference between the two drivers um, that I measured. And I'll show you guys on the graph here in a second. But But anyway, that being said... The tonality is great. It's fantastic. The timbre is is amazing. Very very good quality for a single dynamic driver. The only problem with the timbre, in my opinion, is around the 8K area. That is a a real peak from what I can identify. Um, for the most part, it uh, 
But that's not the problem. The problem is not the peak itself. The problem is the timbre. Um, so it has kind of a sharp attack to it. Now here's the deal, and this is what I'll say, is I did not give these much time to burn in. I listened to them for a total of about 10, 20 hours at most. Um, and then I started modifying them and whatnot. So <clears throat> I would actually like to buy another pair so I can have them on hand just unmolested so that way I know exactly what they sound like without having any alterations or anything. These have already been touched, they've already been messed with. I, I can't go back and change them so I'm not gonna do that. But um, but yeah, I would like to get another pair just to have them on hand and see if those issues kind of change um, after 20, 30, 50 hours. Because dynamic drivers are interesting. Um, especially drivers like this. So th these are a metalized uh, composite kind of driver. We'll, we'll take a look at them. They're, they're, I'm not sure if they're titanium or, or aluminum magnesium or, or what, what kind of metallurgy or metal they're using, um, but they are metal-coated diaphragms. So the thing with metal-coated diaphragms, um, they're very stiff and they take a long time to burn in, longer than like a, a PET um, diaphragm or just a, a typical, um, you know, plastic or, or whatever you want to call it, you know, even like a mylar or whatever. Metal metal diaphragms take a little bit more time to burn in, um, even compared to like LCP or anything like that. So just keep that in mind that these may take some time to burn in. Um, if you want to know the best way to burn them in, I would say just play like white noise or pink noise, or you can just listen to music like you normally do. Um, but what I would recommend is, is taking them out of your ears and playing music at a relatively loud volume. Don't, don't crank them, don't let them distort, but um, just at a relatively loud volume, let them play on their own without having them in your ears, and then you can come back to them. Now, some people are going to argue with me. I'm not going to get into any kind of argument with anyone about whether or not burn-in is real. It's my personal belief that burn-in is absolutely real. Um, I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to debate that. It's not up for debate. I'm not going to argue with anybody. If this is my personal belief. This is what I know from personal experience. Disagree, agree, I don't care. You can think whatever you want to think, but it is my personal opinion that burn-in is absolutely a thing and that some drivers, not most, just a few, um, benefit from from burn-in. So just keep that in mind. These might benefit from burn-in, but there are some issues with the timbre, and they're slightly sharp, and they're slightly aggressive in the 8K region, okay? So that's the only major flaw that I found with them. Other than that, everything is great. Um, snare hits, uh, vocals, everything has a very, very natural replay, sounds very good, very realistic, very dynamic. I mean, the punch, the slam, the note weight, the, like the note weight and the texture of these IMs is almost perfect. It's so close to being perfect. The only thing that I wish is that they had just a little more resolution. Um, there's just not, there's just not that resolution there. The tonality is good. They sound very good. They sound very smooth for the most part, except for that upper treble area or low, I should say lower treble area. Um, but yeah, like other than that, they're very smooth, nice sounding, well balanced. I wouldn't say they're warm. I'd say they're, they're probably a little bit on the cold side. Um, some people may argue that with me, you know, it just depends on your personal preference. But they are indeed a very good sounding IEM, especially for 20 bucks. They are a fantastic choice. So I will just put that out there and I'll just say, first off, they're a very competent IEM. They're a no-brainer. If you're on the fence and you're thinking about buying a pair, just go ahead and go for it. Um, you can't go wrong, even compared to the DeFi. And we'll get into these later. This is a different animal, but I don't, I'm don't. i not going to talk about these yet today. Um, but yeah, even compared to that, I would say these, these still are a great option. Um, and I would definitely pick up a pair. And you can actually see just by the, the way that I touch them and move them, um, the magnetism is extremely strong because uh, even outside the shells, they they I push them and they they either click from the from the magnetism or they they repel each other. So, but anyway, yeah. So these are very good sounding IMs. Um, as far as an overall grade goes, um, it's very very high. Like I said, tonality would probably be an A, maybe an A minus. 
Um, and then the uh, technicalities would be like a B minus, maybe a C. They're just not very technical. They, they are a little bit, um, and that's mostly due to their, their super, super high quality, super natural uh, note weight, like the density of the instruments and everything. Um, and the, uh, the dynamics are very good. Uh, they could, you know, they could be a little bit better, but for 20 bucks, I mean, there's no, there's no competition. There's no arguing whatsoever. These are some of the absolute best sounding dynamic IMs I've ever heard. Um, KZ is absolutely killing it in this space. I'll tell you what, they're getting so close. If they could just somehow get a driver in here that has the, the resolution ability, it would be game over, dude. I'm telling you guys, it would it would seriously be game over. Um, the EA500, I wouldn't really call that a resolution monster. Um, it, it's not very resolving in my opinion. I mean, it is a little bit for its price range. Um, I would say the, the Alina or the Alina SE is more resolving than the um, EA500. But anyway, as far as the note weight goes and the, and the tonality, I would probably take these over the EA 500s, um, but they, but, but that's just in those areas. So once you start getting into imaging um, and like the the depth and layering of certain instruments, um, then once you start getting into the width of the stage and um, separation and whatnot. Uh, accuracy of imaging, you know, where where the instruments are and like, you know, how pinpoint accurate it is. I would say these are just, they're, they're above average, but, um, but I would say they're, you know, they're, I don't know, maybe, maybe in the $50, $70 range. I don't know. I, anyway, they're good, but they're not like mind blowing. Um, that's where the EA 500 kind of, kind of has, more ground on them is when it comes to the the more technical abilities they're much better um, the stage is much more open uh, there's much more separation between instruments there's more micro details and that's another thing is these kind of suffer in the um, in the micro detail department they have plenty of macro details or or um, like punch and slam um, you know uh, good dynamics good good emphasis um, you know, with certain instruments, certain textures, uh, the replay is very good. Um, but there's just other areas where the EA 500 just stomps all over these. Um, but yeah, as far as 20 bucks goes, man, you really can't go wrong. So anyway, enough gushing about the IMs themselves. Let's get into the teardown and we'll, uh, we'll get into it. But yeah, very good sounding IMs, much, much recommended. If you haven't bought a pair, go out and buy a pair. If you're on the fence, buy a pair. It, it, they're 20 bucks. It can't hurt. If you're on a budget and you're really, really tight and you're wondering, you know, whether or not you should choose these versus these, um, this is the cheaper, cheaper set. Just, just go for these. Like, that's it. No contest. Um, these versus the, the CVX, these all day. Don't just, don't, don't even pay attention to these. These are still good. They're good. Don't get me wrong. They're good. But these are better. Okay. They're just a little bit better. Um, but yeah, let's get into the tuning principles. We'll talk about that, and then we'll we'll finish up the video. And oh yeah, and take them apart, of course. All right. So real quick, <clears throat> that being said, I've been in here before, so just keep in mind this is not how they are stock. This is not the stock glue that they used. Uh, I've already disassembled and reassembled them. But yeah. Anyway, let's let's take a look inside. All right. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the the design of the ZVX. So there's a few notable things here. First off is, um, and this is why I applaud KZ for, for changing the connectors, um, even though I do think that they need to change the orientation. Um, so typically, when a manufacturer makes a connector like this, they only do one connector for both sides, okay? Um, that's all they need to do because they're, they're identical. It doesn't matter which one goes where. But because the, the connector is angled, and I will demonstrate to you guys here, um, these are, in fact, molded differently. Uh, I don't know how I can convey this, but but these are two, just two separate molds, okay? One for the left ear and one for the right ear. So they, Casey had to go out of their way to manufacture a new connector 
and use two different molds and then obviously you have the the added complexity of assembly because these are easily you know uh, put you know mis misused or whatever misinstalled like in in the wrong shells so so they got that that potential issue too but yeah they you know they didn't have to go out of their way to do that um but that's just a quality of life feature and um and and like i said i wanted to just give them my my appreciation for them trying and and for doing that um because this is something that they didn't have to do but it really goes towards helping the the ergonomics of the im itself so anyway let's uh let's talk a little bit about the shells here so this is the interior cavity of the shell um, like I said, the, the paint isn't the most durable, um, so you might want to get the, the metal, the silver-looking set. This is just what they sent me, the black ones. Um, but this is the interior of the, of the shell, of the cavity. And you will notice that there is this... Um, most of the chamber is flat, and then you have a small amount of the surface area. Um, for the dampener here, and this is kind of like skewed at an angle kind of goes down and then into the nozzle now these are very very high quality um, metal molds that they're using um, because they're they're new obviously once the the more they use them the more they get worn out um, but these are I mean these these are you know just very very high quality molding like hardly any molding marks um, yeah there's just not there's not much to um, to, to complain about like compared to the um the ea 500 shell like those shells look like they've been through hell like they're worn out but they are are also um what do you call it the uh they have the the silver finish on them the sorry i can't think what you call it now but anyway um these obviously don't have that but i mean just the i can tell by uh, the the lack of molding marks and stuff that these are very very high quality shells very high quality molds um and just the tolerances the way they go together and everything i mean once they print their you know ten thousandth unit i'm sure they they won't be as uh as nice but yeah i mean it's a very very nice shell fits together very well very high quality i would have no hesitation to use this in like a diy i am um but yeah very high quality work by kz so very nice to see that um and then so this was, if you remember, this is the driver from the uh, CXS, okay? So I'll just show you guys that that's the front. It's just like a standard PET driver. And then there's the back of the driver. And this is the notable difference here. So this is the new driver. This is the driver for the ZVX, okay? And this is the CXS on the right. So ZVX, CXS. And you will notice that the... PCB has changed quite significantly. The dimensions, let's see the depth. So the depth has also changed. These are much more shallow. All right, I hope you guys can see that okay. But yeah, so the depth of the, of the uh, driver itself is different. Um, so I'm, I'm, I assume there are larger magnets in here. Uh, but we will find out. And then the... What else was there? Oh, yeah. So there's also no no path here for the glue. Um, I mean, for the wires to come down. This is a kind of an older design. So this is a, a, actually a newer design for KZ. This is kind of going back to an older design. Um, and you can see there's this little cutout here for the wires to come out and go around. Um, this is actually, these are, these are harder to damage just because the wires are hidden. Uh, but then again, there's a, they have to have like a relief or a cutout in the magnet for the wires to fit through. Uh, and then you have any strain or any kind of push or pull on this area here and you could damage the, the wires. So, um, just a little bit different, different arrangement. So... Uh, and then you'll notice here, so on the PCB, there are four solder pads. And now there are no components because I had already removed them. Um, but this is the Zobel network. So this is in parallel with the positive and the negative terminal. So it's just one goes to one and one goes to the other. 
but there is a, a resistor and a capacitor that go in this spot here, and that is how they tune the, the driver. Um, basically, essentially what it does is it skews the, um, the, the resistance graph or the resistance profile of the driver. So it, it's kind of hard to explain, but you can actually plot out the resistance curve of a, of a driver, like on a graph. You can plot it out and it'll, it'll tell you, uh, what frequencies have the most resistance and what frequencies have the least. Um, <clears throat> and anyway, so essentially by adding the resistor and the capacitor, you can alter that and kind of shift the frequency response of the driver just because that that changes where the resistance is um, <clears throat> so you can make the the driver skew more bassy or more treble heavy just depending on what value of components you put on the back of this little pcb here um, so yeah so easily tunable just by changing the components that's part of the zobel network now the whole reason why i had removed them and i should have not i should have not removed the drivers i should have just removed the the components without removing the drivers but i wanted to see them um anyway the, the the reason why i removed them is because i wanted to see if there was any difference in that timbre um with the zobel network removed and i think there may be but i'm not sure um the Tambor around the, the lower treble could just be inherent to the driver itself and the material that they used. And I'll just show you as a point of comparison. See that the um, the hole on the CXS, not, not the hole in the center, but this outer hole here where the sound emanates from, is a little bit smaller compared to the uh, ZVX driver. So the hole's a little bit larger. Like I said, this is a, a different driver. This is like a little bit newer design. This is also a design that, that's more commonly used in their um, in their hybrid units. This is more a driver that they use for their single dynamics. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so you'll notice there's like a metal diaphragm and then just a clear uh, PET diaphragm in that one. And then again, the uh, if you hold them, sorry, it's a little hard. But if you hold them side by side, you'll you'll notice that the ZVX driver is deeper. So, so anyway, let me um, take this driver apart real quick, and we'll we'll take a look inside. And we'll take a look at the diaphragm. All right, guys. So to finish out this video, I'm sorry. This is actually the next day. My camera kept overheating, and I just it got too late, so I decided to stop the video. But anyway, this is the driver of the ZVX. It's a very nice driver, actually. Uh, it's got some sort of metal membrane. Um, I'll put a picture up on the on the screen here so you guys can see what it looks like. But a uh, very, very interesting driver. Um, I'm not sure if it's like a magnesium aluminum alloy. Uh, they don't list the compound. KZ never really lists what the what the type of membrane is. Um, I've seen they have titanium. They have um, I don't think I've ever seen a biofiber, but I've seen black carbon drivers. Um, somebody was asking me what the models were the other day. I, th I think I answered them. Um, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head because I don't actually... Uh, the only one I have is this CCA CA16 Pro. I believe that one had a black one. And the CCA CSN and then the KZ... Z oh shoot what is it ZXS ZXS I think it is it's the weird funky looking one that's got like this droopy bottom and it looks like it's melting um, but anyway that's the other one that's got the carbon black driver um, so just to show you guys real quick whoops that sorry not that one this this is the carbon black driver so this is a KZ driver this is the carbon black and then this is the driver out of the ZVX. We have our um, PCB here on the back. This has our terminals for the uh, Zobel network for the resistor and the capacitor. We have our uh, dual magnetic circuit here. It's just two magnets, so there's one in the center and then one on the outer portion. Um, then we have our shell and whatnot. And then um, I'm just gonna pause real quick here for a second. I'll pull out the titanium driver and I'll show you guys that. 
All right, so here are just a couple KZ drivers. Um, sorry, my air conditioning's running. Um, but yeah, so we have the the nano coated. What do they call it? Uh, nano scale diaphragm right here. This is the new new version. I'll put that up under the microscope to show you guys. Um, pretty cool. Nice. Uh, got a thicker coating on it. Actually, we can see. Yeah, it's really, really stiff. Whoops. Yeah, that's a really stiff diaphragm. So very, very nice diaphragm in that one. And then this is their titanium coated. You can see much more compliant. And then this is the carbon black. It's very compliant too. But this one right here, uh, they definitely learned some things. Um, it's definitely some new technology in there because that is very, very stiff. I mean, that's extremely stiff. Compared to these, these are these are absolutely nothing compared to the ZVX driver. So I think that's why the um, the I that I gave the tonality and the timbre such a high rating is just because that that driver man is just ridiculously stiff. So. But anyway, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this review video. I know my, my videos are long. I had a couple people in the comments that were like, five minutes in and, and no review, bye. And then somebody else was like, uh, saying that they clicked on the video or whatever and they had been watching for a while and they haven't got a review. Dude, you have a fucking fast forward button, all right? So if you, if you like, don't like the video just fast forward bro like <laughs> i don't know what to tell you don't watch my videos go watch somebody else's videos but anyway that is it for this video here and i will catch you guys in the next one peace